Once in a while, you have to get away from the herd so you can listen to the sound of it. You can tell a lot from the way the cattle fall, but the same can't be said for the drovers you hire along the way. It's hard to judge a man by his voice. That's why we keep gaining some, losing others. It's my job to judge, and sometimes I miss. My name's Gil Favor, trail boss. on my drive. That man's a gunman, Mr. Favor. A killer. Well, now, whether you believe it or not, I wasn't going to kill him. I only wanted to make him talk. As long as it's just talk. If anything happens to that boy, though, I'll know who did it. I told you. He's a killer. You got proof, Toby? Well, I can get it if you give me a chance. I'll give you a chance to get back to camp. And for your sake, that boy better stay healthy. You've made a bad decision, Mr. Favor. And on a cattle drive, a trail boss can't afford to make bad decisions. Get back to camp. Toby's been trying to warn you about Johnny Camber. Hmm? I believe him. That kid does look like the pictures of Billy Carter on the wanted posters. Billy Carter's as bad as they come. All I ask of a man is he does his job. As long as Johnny Camber does that, he stays. All right, boss. But you'll be taking the herd through the toughest country we've tried yet with the worst crew we've ever had. You've hired a gunman, a camp... Fight. I know what I hired, what I'm up against. You better stick to scouting, Pete. I'll drive herd. <laughs> Wish. You got a mighty peculiar way of taking a bath, friend. Well, I was getting ripe. You know, as Mr. Favor always says, do a thing right and proper the first time. You cooking stew again? Now, you know darn well I'm cooking down tallow for lye soap. Oh, well, I should have known. It smells better than the grub you've been handing out. Now, what are you standing there for? Get on back to work. Jed was just talking about it. Looks mean, and there's a lot of it. Well, it's the wrong time of year. Two or three weeks earlier, or even later, wouldn't have no trouble, but... Jed, when you were a trail boss, you lost a herd trying to take it through this way, didn't you? Well, everybody knows that. Why'd you lose it? No use putting old Jed through that, boss. Why, Jed? Well, like you, I tried it at the wrong time of year. 
and like you again the other day. I had to take on a lot of extra hands I wasn't sure of. How far is it across, Pete? Judd says about 40 miles. Counted most of a week's drive. Can we take the herd through? Well, this is my first time through here. I can't be sure. What about water? Judd tells me there used to be water out about 12 miles, but not much of it. What about going around? We'd have to cut north through Torlone Pass. It means doubling back. Adds up to two or three weeks more time, but... Judd, didn't you say something about having trouble in Torlone Pass, too? That's right, Mr. Favor. Had to turn back. Of course, that was a long time ago. You take a chance on dried up creeks and streams and the rocky grounds hard on the cattle's hoofs. Any better than this? That's hard to say. Two, three weeks. We might run into the same thing. All right, Pete. We'll take him through this way. That settles that. Mr. Favor knows what he's doing. He sure doesn't want any company when he goes to making up his mind. You're going to find out, Pete, that the man who has to make the decisions is about the loneliest man there is. Cockleburrs in a man's bedroll don't strike me as being funny. I was just fishing them out. Who put them there? Well, now, I can't tell you. You wouldn't want me to. Just make trouble with one of your friends. Well, you listen to me, Myers. Maybe you were doing me a favor, and maybe you weren't. Either way, if I catch you messing around with my gear again, I'm going to stretch your ears. Now, get away from me. That's the thanks a man gets for being friendly. If you're missing anything, you ain't the first one in this camp. Man has to be sure before he starts to talk like that. It ain't so hard being sure of something, but proving it's something else. Talking ain't gonna help either way. That makes you right. I just want to make sure you hadn't taken up swallowing the whole steer, horns and all. Cuckleburrs. If you hadn't come busting up, I'd have had a chance to do something more than just talk. Now look. You know how Mr. Favor feels about trouble with this crew. There ain't going to be none. Not without a cause. I figure you give a Jasper like Myers enough rope, and he'll throw a loop around anything that ain't tied down. All right, all right. I'm shut. <laughs> How far does a man go with something he isn't sure about? You got something on your mind, let's have it. Well, it's Carl Myers. He didn't like to run camp. Well, no, I didn't hire him on just to be liked. Well, I caught him going through my bedroll. He said he was picking out some cockleburrows some Yahoo put there. Had him in his hand, too. Isn't much when it's said. You missing anything? No. A man deserves the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Got your supplies? 
You never know the time I didn't. I'm heading into dry country from here on in. Still time to send a man into three corners, anything we need. We do it tonight. No need, Mr. Favor. Check again to make sure. Check again? You'd think I was a green-eared tenderfoot or something. Mr. Favor, can I have a word with you, Private? There's nothing you can't say in front of the rest of the men. Just as you say, Mr. Favor. It's about crossing the dry plains. It's the wrong time. You know it. I know it. But I want you to know that I think you can make it. That's all I got to say. Don't you listen to him, Mr. Favor. Jed Blaine's been around these parts for a long time. Everybody knows that he lost his herd trying to stake plains at the wrong time of the year. He's never been able to live it down. He'd like you to try this drive. Then he can always say he ain't the only trail boss who lost a herd and a crew. You believe that, Mr. Favor? Any reason not to believe it, Jed? I'm going to take this herd straight across. Won't be easy, but it can be done. We're going to keep those cows in the move. You'll eat and sleep in the saddle. Maybe you'll cuss the day you signed on. But we're going across. Any man who thinks different can draw his time right now. Only a fool would cut straight across in this time of weather. Not only that... Draw your time, get your gear, get out. Anybody else want to go with him? I don't like to wrap it out on you, Mr. Favor. But it wasn't just cows that died out there with Jed. It was men, too. I reckon I'll draw my time and string along with Bates. How about you, Jed? Well, I signed on, Mr. Favor. I'll stay on. Want to be an eyewitness if I lose the herd? I'll stay on. Howdy, get the cash box. Pay those three off. See they're out of camp tonight. Mr. Favor is sure set in his ways, even when he's wrong. Who says he's wrong? I say he's wrong taking us through this way. He's wrong thinking old Jed would give him bum advice because he wants to see this herd lost. Look, Mr. Favor knows more about taking a herd through than you'll ever know, Pete. Even if that's right, Rowdy, it ain't for you to say it. Look, I'll say what I want to you or anyone else around here. started wearing it, Billy. <laughs> My name's Johnny. Johnny Campbell. It's been a long while. But I had to make sure you were Billy Carter before I killed you. I told you my name's Johnny Camber. Now I'll tell you something else. Keep away from me. All right, Billy, for now. I just wanted you to know I knew. Any trouble? No, it's just that I don't understand about us driving across here, even though the old man did say you have a chance. Bet Bates was right about the old man. I think he was egging me on just because misery needs company. Yeah, but you're risking the herd just to save a few days. Look, Rowdy, the price of beef jumps up and down according to supply. Now, you've got to reach the market at a time when the price is high enough to make the drive worthwhile. 
Yeah, well, well, why don't you say that to Pete and the others? Why do you just let them I go? I can't stop they... to give a lecture every time I want to do something. They ought to figure it out themselves. So should you. You better turn in. We've got a long day's work ahead of us tomorrow. Yeah. All right. One dipper to a man until we get to some water. It's Mr. Favor's orders. Why, you old goat, you just love giving orders, don't you? I'll lay off, Rowdy. What do you got to shoot your mouth off about? Fine job of trail guiding you've been doing. It's Mr. Favor's choosing, not mine. Not the way I see it. You left him in a hole by not choosing back there at three corners before we started the dry plains. Coming from a kid still wet behind the ears, I'm gonna let that pass. Well, don't do me any favors, Pete. I can take care of myself with you or any other man on this crew. Pete, Mr. Favor wants you. I think it's too far the shape this herd is in. I asked how far, not what you thought. Keep moving another two, three miles and circle them in. Reach that water tomorrow. Yes, sir. Sugar wishbone. Ain't got none. Thought you uh, checked out your supplies. Well, I did. But I counted a sack of beans instead of sugar. Now, doing without sweets ain't gonna kill none of this hard rock outfit. You did your job right. Wouldn't have to do without anything. Well, that was my fault, Mr. Favor. I thought it was sugar. I don't care whose fault it was. Still no sugar, no excuse for not having any. Oh, I tell you, this outfit's falling apart, and I ain't gonna take much more of it. <laughs> well, I ever told you, Pike, is you knew how to play poker. Maybe it's the way you play. Maybe you're just a poor loser. It's better than being a poor winner, or a crooked one. Now listen, Clark, get off my back and stay off. I'm getting tired of you and your cracks. Myers, 
Clark! One more shindig like this and you're both through. Myers are late for your trick at night herd. No dirty cheat's gonna draw a pig sticker on me and get I away I said with that's it. enough. Some music. Might make things seem a little better. Shut up the caterwauling. Just trying to help. You all know that Myers is a thief and a cheat. Mr. Favor had no right taken up for him. You got no call to say that, Clark. Mr. Favor didn't take up for anyone. Well, it seemed that way to me. And you're a poor one to talk. He tried to steal from you, too. You don't know that any more than I do. Well, half the men in this crew are missing stuff from their gear, and we all know who's taking it. There's nothing lower than a trail camp thief. There's one thing. A woman killer like Billy Carter. Maybe some of you heard of Billy Carter. Fast gun with ten notches. I keep wondering if he cut another one for the girl he killed. My daughter, Jenny, was just 18 when she ran off with young Billy Carter. I wasn't home when he rode up for a job. I hired on with a herd on the Goodnight Loving Trail. When I got back, she was gone with him. I went after him. When I caught up with him, Jenny was dead. Killed by a bullet meant for Billy Carter. She was going to have his baby when she died. I've been looking for Billy Carter ever since. Say, hey, boss. Yeah? What are you going to do about the trouble between Talby and Johnny Camber? Do? What do you expect me to do? I can't wipe the nose of every man in this outfit. I think Johnny Camber's who he says he is. You do? Yes, I do. Oh. Well, I'm sorry I bothered you. Nothing but loose dirt out here. Make digging a grave real easy. That swale back ridge. No graze, though. And we'll have to water them in bunches. There's only room for about 50 head at a time. Right. Now, say, Pete, uh, about yesterday, well, I, I didn't mean to be so sharp with you. I. Uh... You don't owe me no apology, Mr. Favor. You're the boss. Right back to Quince and Scarlet. Tell them to slow up the main body of the herd. I'll send the point into water first. Break off the first 50 head. Pete says there's water beyond that rise. Take them in, let them drink, move them out for the next bunch to get in. Right. Johnny! Slow them down. Break them in bunches of 50.
just saw it in time. It's all full of bones of birds and animals that drunk it and died. You sure? Well, take a look for yourself. Scarlet, turn the others back. They haven't spilled the water yet. Get them back beyond the rise. We'll join up later. Straight poison. You knew about this, didn't you, Jed? It wasn't poison when I got my herd here, Mr. Favor. It wasn't. It was bone dry. I should have turned back and didn't. All right, let's get back to the herd. You'd have gotten a big laugh out of this if I'd have taken a drink of that, wouldn't you, Pete? Rowdy, lay off me. I'm not going to tell you again. <coughs> All right, break it off. Why? Let him up, Jed. He's been asking this for a long time. Stay out of it, Mr. Favor. What's the matter with you? With both of you? Hey, boss, I, I didn't mean to. That's the trouble with this outfit. Nobody means to. It just happens. I don't. Keep them moving. Yeah, but only without water. There's none out here for them. Moon's up. Must be after midnight. Sent me back. There's water up ahead. Ain't much of it. It ain't fit for humans, but it'll keep the cattle from choking on their own tongues. How far? About a mile and a half. No more. All right, we'll try to make it. Roddy, get back to Wishbone. Have them move the wagon up ahead. I want coffee and sandwiches waiting when we bring the herd in. Wake up, you no good. It'll be in a few minutes. Wishbone. Now what? Look at this bread. What's the matter with it's it? It's hard as a board. Can't you even bake bread? What was driving day after day, every day, and now night after night? When do I have the chance? I warned you, if you can't handle the job right... Then say I can't. Get yourself a new cook, Mr. Favor. I'm done. Gee, Mr. Favor, you think he means it? Mushy, you're the new cook. The men will want those sandwiches in five minutes. What's the matter with you, Wishbone? Oh, get away from me. Go on, leave me alone. I ask you a question. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? What's the matter with everybody around here? What's the matter with Mr. Favor? What's the matter with you? Well, I mean quitting like this. You know Mushy hasn't got the brains to eat the food, let alone cook it. Oh, so now my cooking's getting good, is it? Well, you can just darn well thrive on the memory of it, because it's the last of it you're ever going to get. Why, you old coot. Don't you call me an old coot, you whelp. Look, I don't give a hang about your lousy cooking. I don't give a hang about what you give a hang about. Now, you get out of here before I... Before you what? Before I blast that whelp face of yours right out from under your hat. You see what I mean now? What's what you mean? You're, you're pointing that gun at me. You want to fire it, don't you? You're mighty well told I want to fire it. Now, you get away from me before I blast your... Yeah, that 
guess I see what you mean. Do you wish? Well, I'm not so sure I do. All I know is a couple days back, you wouldn't have poked a gun in my face no matter how sore you got at me. Something just seems to have happened. Everybody's at everybody else's throat like a pack of bobcats. Everybody thinks everybody else is wrong, too. I sure wish I knew why. Well, there's certain times, I guess, when everything's got to go wrong. All wrong. I don't know. Maybe it's the heat. Uh, we've we've been through heat before. Well, maybe it's Mr. Favor going across the dry plains when he should have gone around. Now, who says he should have gone around? I say. Well, who are you to say? You're not helping him move any, quitting him when he needs you the most. You think you're being his little helper? Picking a fight with Myers over some cockleburrs and driving at Pete just because you think he was wrong for not warning Mr. Favor sooner? Pete was wrong. Who says he was wrong? I say he's wrong. Well, who are you to say? Well, I'll show you, you lice-bitten old coot. Well, you get out of here before I blast that sniveling whelp face of yours right off of this wagon. Where's my watch, you low-down thieving coyote? I don't know what you're talking about. Dead. Rowdy, tell Mr. Favor I'll be back. If I don't... Quince, you and Kyle take care of him. And Joe, go get Mr. Favor, will you? Whose gear is this? Johnny Cambers. Well, clean it up. Mushy, help him get this gear cleaned up. Jed catches up with that dirty murdering thief. You setting yourself up as judge and jury? I caught up with him. He might have been real quick with the knife, but he wasn't very fast with the gun. Clark had him figured right, Mr. Favor. Most anything belonging to anybody in this camp worth more than a quarter. Right here. your razor, Mr. Paver?
Hey, Mushy, your coffee's boiling over. Well, thanks, Mr. Rowdy. I ain't got the hang of everything yet. Is Wishbone still holding his grouch? Oh, he's lying in there, looking up at nothing. He didn't even cuss me out this morning. Well, I've been thinking, wishing things was back the way they was. Well, you ain't the only one. I got a hunch they're gonna get worse. Next to this, that poison spring, it tastes good. It might have that, Mr. Rowdy. I've waited a long time, Billy, but I had to be sure. Get your gun, Billy. Toby, I told you his name is Johnny Camber. You can settle what's between you when you leave the crew. No, Mr. Favor. I'm sorry. But it's got to be settled now. I waited too long to let you or anybody else cheat me. I'm not going to have any more trouble on this camp. You won't stop me, Mr. Favor. You can't. Billy Carter stole my daughter, my only child. And afterwards, he killed her just as if he pointed a gun himself. Well, I'll kill him with my bare hands if I have to. Easy, Tommy. Give him his gun, Mr. Favor. There's no use in letting it hang fire. We can end it right now. What chance would he have against you? Billy Carter with ten notches on your gun. Stay out of it, Pete. Is what Talby said true, Johnny? I'm Billy Carter. I'll give him his gun. No. You won't need one now. If this is the way you want it, Mr. Favor, I guess it has to be all right with me. Did it kill him? His gun ain't loaded. Why? Going on this way, thinking about her every hour of every day, seeing her face every time I close my eyes. He found her picture, but. He didn't find this. Marriage license. You and Jenny. Why didn't you tell me? Why should I let you think your daughter's name was Mrs. Billy Carter? It's all over. The day we got married, I let her throw away every shell I had for my gun. And I swore I'd never buy any more. I never have. But the, w the way she died. We just found out she was going to have a baby. She was so happy. Because I just told her we were going back to tell you. But a drunken gunslinger recognized me and drew on me. Ginny jumped between us. She died there in the street. Look, looking up at me.
All right, so I was wrong about Myers and Johnny, too. I got an ownership paper saying I always got to be right. It's over and done with. I want the herd headed up and moving out in 15 minutes. Mr. Paver. Some of us haven't had a chance to eat yet. No rest and not a decent meal for days. If you think you can keep pushing men like that, you're wrong a third time. I said I wanted that herd moving in 15 minutes. Then you can move them yourself. Midway Valley's not over four hours' drive from here. There's enough grass there to rest the herd. If you don't need a scout, you don't need anybody. Anybody else feels the same way as Pete. They can ride out with him. You're all a bunch of yellow quitters. How about you, Jed? Well, I signed on to help get these cows through. Now, I had a herd quit me once, but I never quit a herd. I'm staying, Mr. Favor. Talby, is Johnny able to ride? You say, Talby. You can ride enough to help. We're staying. Rowdy, get the cash box, pay him off. Then let's get these beeves on the move. Mushy, you got your wish. As of right now, you're a working cowhand. All right, let's get our gear and get out of here. He didn't quit. Scarlet or Quince either. What is it? Dry. Dry as a bone. Well, Midway Valley's just over that rise. Keep moving! <laughs> Valley. Sun and dusk can do in a few days. One thing a trail boss needs is good judgment. It's wrong about Myers, Johnny, Jed. Now, it looks like I've been wrong thinking I could get this outfit across the dry plains. Well, the way I see it, a man takes on a job, he ought to see it through. No matter how much he don't like it or how much it costs him. Try turning the herd, boss. There's nothing behind him. It's too late to turn back. As you might guess, there's no water. As far as I know, there's no chance of finding any water between here and the end of the dry plains. Am I right, Jed? That's right, Mr. Favor. That means at least three, four more days with the cattle. If we had enough hands, we could force the cattle across, but with only us, well, I don't, I don't need to tell you. It can't be done, all I have to do is look at them. It's going to be 
kind of hard to say. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Faber. Don't say it. I guess I know, too. He's the boss. Let him say it. No, that's just the point. I don't have the right to be boss any longer. I'm afraid I've proved that. All the other hands realized it and left. For staying with me. Thanks. Now, I don't see how anybody could be quite as wrong as I was, still give an order and expect to have it carried out. But that's just what I'm going to do. I'm giving you one last order, and I still expect to have it carried out. I want you all to move out on your own. Get through as best you can. Without you? Lack of water can kill you just as quick as it can kill the steers. What are you planning on doing? Staying out here with these lousy cows? I don't know much about droving, Mr. Favor, but if you're trying to get rid of us, you... That's what he's trying to do, son. Oh, now, it's time somebody begun to talk sense around here. Oh, that's enough, Wishbone. No, it's not, Mr. Favor. I told you to move on, all of you. That's an order. You trying to get rid of us because you don't want us to sit out here and watch the cattle drop? What do I have to do to get rid of you? Don't you understand there's no water here? Not only for the herd, there's none for you either. Now, you can get through. You're not tied down with the cattle. So start moving out, now. I have to watch my herd, but there's nothing says I gotta watch you. Now get out of my sight, all of you. I ain't got any place to go, Mr. Favor. Me neither. You can do without water for a couple days. I ain't a bit thirsty, Mr. Favor. There. You see, Mr. Favor? You see? You stoop. What are you all standing around for? Let's see if we can get these lousy cows back on their feet. Mr. Favor, out there. We got lost. You got lost? Yeah, I, it's rough out there. Pete, Scarlet, and me. We couldn't find our way. We didn't know which way to go. We sort of miscalculated, Mr. Favor. It was a small mistake. Natural thing, making mistakes. We figured if you'd sort of let us stroll along with you, we wouldn't make no more mistakes. What'd you find up ahead? We found some water, and the grass is a lot better on the other side of the valley. You'd be wanting to take them straight through? Yeah, Pete. Straight through. Well, Rowdy, you gonna stand around up here all day? You're gonna earn your pay. I thought I'd be glad to see you, you old brush popper. <laughs> <laughs> what else would you expect a crew like yours to do, Mr. Faber? You had the right hunch all the time. Looks like you're gonna make it. We'll make it, Jed.